Hello everyone and welcome to day 21 of our blog series Surprised by Hope. Today we're looking at purgatory. Now there's a fun title. And our link Bible text for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 10 to 17. I wonder if any of you have had much involvement with building and construction down the years. Maybe you're a dab hand at such things. Um, enjoy a bit of DIY and take pride in the improvements made to your homes down the years. We all have these good intentions, especially on the bank holidays I always find, is those jobs we never quite get round to normally. But I'm afraid DIY for me stands for destroy it yourself. I am a little accident prone, so stay away from electrics, plumbing and anything else that could go bang or drip. But we're all, in a sense, in a process of building something in life, whether that be a home, whether that's a career, a relationship, a marriage, or best of all, building others up as a bit of an encourager. As we're involved in building things in life, the one question we should probably ask ourselves is, is our building strong enough with good foundations? Will it stand the test of time, or will it crumble around us? This is not just physical buildings themselves, but takes in relationships, priorities, decision-making, and our faith journey, life itself. In 1 Corinthians, the Apostle Paul is saying there will be a time when all the works of all believers will be subject to a test by fire to work out whether they are worthy of reward. One of the greatest most motivational drivers for those of faith is that Jesus will be returning. It gives, I, th I suppose, a focus to our faith and our worship. And when he does return, it will be a time of reward. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 says, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. In the New Testament, it's all about God coming to us from heaven, not us constantly striving for a place in heaven ourselves. So what about purgatory? How does it fit here? Indeed, does it fit at all? And Tom Wright questions this in his own blog. After death, many medieval writers felt that perfection in life was the only thing to guarantee one's place in heaven. Sin might still be swashing around, attaching itself to us. We were not deemed ready because God would only accept perfect, sin-free souls. Sins may not have been dealt with. You needed to serve your time. This was rejected over time by Protestant reformers around the 16th century. Purgatory was a stage for those on the way to heaven that needed to be overcome. They may deviate en route. And we'd need a clean-up operation before we were able to enter heaven. If anyone had any sin left over, purgatory was in a sense the one-stop service station that would purge them of it before the journey reached the heavenly gates. Purgatory was really a nasty place to be in, but was seen by many as a necessary stop step on the road to salvation. It was not exactly easy street. It meant pain and loss, and suffering in hope was seen as somehow worthy. However, the Bible sees the New Testament God coming to live with us, bringing his kingdom to earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, he always wants us to be better, to clean up our act. But it's a real move away from us going up to heaven with our sins still outstanding and needing punishment. Jesus brought the kingdom to earth, his divine mission to die to take that punishment for us, take all our sins on himself to the cross and sacrifice himself for our salvation. Purgatory was thereby rejected as both a principle and a necessity in favour of New Testament teachings from Jesus around much more attractive things, forgiveness, mercy and love. The foundations of our life buildings then will feature Jesus as our cornerstone, our main building block. He is, as we've said before, the new temple. Our lives will centre around the grace of Jesus coming to earth as our sure and certain hope, our rock, our foundation. That wonderful old hymn, one of my favourites, echoes this, the church is one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 says, No one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. Purgatory fails for its part because it makes salvation something we all have to work for, makes it a works-based process rather than the gift it actually is given freely from God's grace. Given freely for us, but at a cost to God who sacrificed his son for us on the cross. Jesus in scripture said nothing about purgatory at all. There was no stop-off post before heaven to redeem oneself. Jesus was coming to earth to walk among us, spread the gospel, and ultimately die for our sins and salvation. So what about purgatory is the question Tom Wright asked today. During his crucifixion, Jesus offered a most profound answer to the robber hanging and dying next to him. Luke 23 verse 42 says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, asked the robber. And Jesus answered him most profoundly, Truly I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. That lowly thief stood forgiven on the cross, and Jesus had given him the blessed assurance of his place in heaven.
There was no monopoly metaphor here, as Tom Wright alludes to. Do not pass go, do not collect £200, but instead you will go directly to heaven with your sins forgiven. Jesus, I suppose, is the author and illustrator of our faith, and whilst we're still here as a collection of flawed, imperfect beings on earth, we are also, as Christians, living testimonies to that faith in how we treat others, how we reach out to the vulnerable and the weak, the dispossessed, and how we spread the ultimate good news of the gospel. We started off today talking about building on firm foundations, and those things, how we treat others, how we treat the vulnerable, they are the building blocks of our lives. Jesus is that cornerstone, the new temple. And if we build on this, we will surely build the kingdom of God here on earth. And that's certainly a foundation to build on. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. Much love. Bye for now.